Welcome, this is what is happening on the sun today, the 14th of October, 2011. One of you requested a recent picture of me. This is a picture of me, on the left, taken a couple of days ago, playing a replica of the 17th hole at Sawgrass, the so-called Island Green hole. You will note that my ball is 10 feet to the left of the pin. We both parred the hole. Eat your heart out, professional golfers. Anyway, we've had a lot more sea flares and some very interesting jets coming from that same region that we saw yesterday. But first, our trivia question. YouTube depends a lot on videos, moving pictures. Today is an important anniversary for three major advances in motor and pictures. On this date, a Belgian was born in 1801 who first demonstrated the concept of moving pictures. In 1884, an American got a patent for a paper strip film. In 1888, a Frenchman working in England screened the first motion picture. He was murdered in the United States on his way to demonstrate his new marvel, which would upstage both Lumiere and Edison. His film disappeared. No one was ever caught. Who were these three giants of the early motion pictures industry? The answer will be given at the end. Since we met yesterday, there have been four more sea flares, and I just caught out of the corner of my eye that since I started putting this together, there's been yet another one. Amazingly, there are ten officially numbered regions on the disc, and one as yet unnumbered region. Region 1320 was added last night when it appeared down in the southwest. As we normally do, let's start looking in detail in the northwest quadrant with the regions uh, 1309, 1312, 1315 and 1318. Now we're going to have to be a little careful with these comparisons. The plate scales and resolutions of these two images are different. So starting with region 1309 right on the west limb, it looks like to be a single region and hasn't changed very much in the last several days. Region 1312 is a single large spot and again really doesn't seem to have changed a lot in the last 24 hours. Region 1315 here in the middle uh, seems to have decayed a little uh, overnight and also region 1318 seems to have decayed a little too. Next we move to region 1314 in the northeast. It is basically a large spot but seems to have gained a few satellite spots overnight. It also produced one of the sea flares we've seen. Just below it in the south, just below it in the northeast is region 1319 and that seems to have continued its growth pattern and has produced two of the sea flares that we've seen. In the southwest we have region 1313 and that certainly does seem to have fallen apart overnight. However, just to its south a new region has appeared. This is region 1320. Region 1317 in the southeast doesn't seem to have changed a great deal. But region 1319, just to its north, has continued to grow but still has not produced any flares. I created this short movie of a comparison between regions 1319 and 1316 over the last week. You can see that region 1316 rotates over the limb and continues to grow. However, 1319 actually appears from nothing on the disc and grows quite rapidly. And it is this region that's produced all the flares. This is supposed to be an image of the far side of the sun showing the sunspots there, uh, taken using helioseismology techniques with the HMI instrument. If this is a picture of the real number of sunspots on the far side of the sun, then we are in deep trouble and we are at solar maximum. However, I think this is more likely to do with the fact that they rolled the spacecraft yesterday and nobody corrected the data for it. So don't be alarmed, I think tomorrow it will return back to normal. Now let's look at the continuous evolution of these regions using the HMI data. We start with the old spinneroo that we had yesterday, but the rest of the movie seems to be in good shape. And here I'd like you to concentrate on the development of the new region in the southwest and the changes in region 1319 and 1360. Once again we have some usable AIA data looking at the transition region and low temperature corona. In the low temperature transition region, about 50,000 degrees, here region 1314 is the star, producing an ongoing series of rather spectacular jets. In fact, I made a special movie just of that region uh, to show you those jets. See if you can count how many jets originate from the region and scoot off to the northwest. It seems to be the same process repeating itself over and over again. There's some brightening in some small loops near the center of the region which is followed by a jet of dark material going off to the northwest. In the low temperature coronal movie, you can see similar brightenings in the same area. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see there are two regions coming over the east limb, a large one in the north and a much smaller but brighter one in the south. 
We continue to get coronal mass ejections from the Sun throughout this period, and right at the end of the movie there is a coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb. However, is it one heading towards us, or is it one from the back side of the Sun? To find out which is the case, we appeal to the stereo data. Here are two images. The one on the left is from Soho, showing just the beginning of the coronal mass ejection, and the one on the right is from the stereo spacecraft, showing the image from the stereo ahead, which means that the Earth is on the left in this picture, and you can see that the coronal mass ejection is moving out to the right. So this is a coronal mass ejection on the back side of the Sun, probably from that bright region that's due to come over in a couple of days' time. The temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind seems to be fluctuating all over the place. That might be an anticipation of the high-speed stream uh, hitting the Earth from the coronal hole. The high-energy electron flux seems relatively steady for the last few days, but as, we've had no major, uh, but as we've had no major flares, we still have not had a uh, proton event. The auroral zone seems less active than it was yesterday, and that it corresponds to the KP index, which is slightly down in intensity from yesterday too. And NOAA has not issued any space weather warnings in the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background remains at the B4 level, Sunspot number is at 147, the radio sun intensity is increased to 138 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is up slightly to 370 kilometers per second, the solar wind density is much higher at 3 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are unlikely, and X flares are very improbable. The sunspot number will remain high, coronal mass ejections will continue, Solar wind speed will remain low, and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm is low. From the composite coronal image, we can see that the region in the northeast should be coming over the limb tomorrow uh, and uh, continue to produce uh, more activity over the next several days. The answer to the trivia question is the first person to demonstrate moving pictures who was born in 1801 was Joseph Plateau. In 1884, it was George Eastman that obtained pattern for stripped film, and the unfortunate murder victim who made the first motion picture was Louis Le Prince. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.